Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we introduce a new camera. It's the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 or something like that. And we're going to give it a try. Uh, thank you for those who have uh, added to the channel funds because it is with those funds that we bought this new camera. The idea is to reduce the amount of shake and make the videos more interesting. Today we're going to talk about a video from Joe Guerra, AD2AH. He says, uh, well, he says some very nice work about the videos. He says, a question, a friend of his has several lightning rods mounted on his roof. He lives in a heavily wooded property. He would like to mount one end of an end-fed antenna on his home on, at the gable or the soffit and is concerned that the lightning rods would present a halo at zero ground potential and hence negate the radiation pattern. In my mind, I didn't think it would since any um, properly grounded antenna, any properly grounded antenna is essentially running to a ground rod arrestor anyway, so it should not matter. In fact, I thought having lightning rods in the home would actually help the radiation strength. Appreciate your thoughts. Um, let's take a look at what he's got at his house. Okay, so he's in a heavily wooded area, so he's got all these trees and here. Um, he's got a house and there are lightning rods on top, often on the corners too. And these are all connected in a mesh uh, that's grounded uh, sometimes in more than one place. Okay, and he wants to just simply attach his end fed there, and I imagine the other end will go up to a tree, and the coax will come down like that. Now, the lightning rods are designed to present a low resistance to ground for a high transient current. In other words, lightning. The idea that it would be come down these various rods to ground. Uh, some of these are sharpened on top because uh, in, uh, studies have shown that the sharp end will tend to attract the lightning. Other lightning arresters actually look like a big umbrella um, and give the area a large surface to attract lightning. There's different ways of doing it. Now, this is not an RF ground. Um, you can attach, the, you know, when you do your in fed half wave antenna, there's a wire coming out here. Okay, there's coax. Now, I'm going to put the coax in a different color. There's coax coming out here. Okay, and then there's one more terminal. That terminal can be connected to ground. So I would suggest that your friend experiment leaving it untouched because you're going to bring this down. Well, let's get the right color again. We're going to bring this down to a ground rod. And since these things are already grounded, you can use one of those ground rods. And you're going to have your lightning arrestor here. Okay, but now there is an additional terminal right there. And if you want, you can experiment with attaching that to the cable that goes up to the lightning arresters. Now, uh, remember, in the event of a direct strike, the idea of the lightning arrestor is to protect the house and its occupants. Um, the antenna is probably gone, but the lightning arrestor should keep it from going into the house, okay? So you can experiment with or without this to see which you like best. But don't worry about the antenna uh, creating a problem or a shield or something like that. If you are, pick a tree out here that's a ways away 
so that you can have this thing out a ways away from the roof uh, and held in place by a piece of nylon cord or um, UV resistant bungee cords or something like that. Um, and then this will work uh, just fine for you. Now, one of the problems with bungee cords is that they often are not UV resistant. So what you can do is before you attach them to your antenna, slide a piece of um, uh, PVC pipe. Uh, you can get either the black or the white. The black are usually pretty big though. And slide it down over the antenna, put the bungee cords, and then slide that thing back over the bungee cords in such a way that they are completely shielded from direct sunlight and hence from uh, UV problems. So there you have it. If you'd like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support. There are several ways there that you may find of interest. I'm highlighting the Patreon way right now. Also, please be sure to send in your entry for giveaway number four, which is this antenna here. This is the um, Alpha Delta DXCC uh, no, DXEE -E antenna, and uh, it's a remarkable antenna. It's built like a tank. It's uh, 40, 20, 15, and 10, and um, although it will only cover half of 40, you can choose the lower half or the upper half by how you set it up. So this antenna will go to some lucky person. Send that um, entry form no later than a week before the day we do the selection. We're going to be doing the selection on November 25th. November 25th. So try and get that entry in uh, before about November 18th, if you can. I've had uh, mail take as much as a week to get to me. Uh, the, what I will do is go down to the post office the day of the drawing and collect all the mail so I have the most current. To enter, send a postcard or a QSL card or a single sheet of paper in an envelope to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And in your entry, put giveaway number four and uh, put... Um, your name, the address to where you would want it shipped if you win, and your phone number so that I can call if I have any questions. There you have it. Until we next meet, 73.